I'm Gino, like you care. Welcome to Hopes, Dreams, and Reality. About six years ago, I was taken out to lunch by a big Hollywood producer. He wanted to option one of my screenplays. I'd only been in L.A. six months, and it looked as though it was meant to be. I went home to Illinois to await the big phone call, the big production. That phone call never came. I would have gone back to L.A. and tried again, but I had gotten a good friend of mine pregnant. I asked Kate to marry me, but she said no. She'd been married once already, and she'd seen how I kept my bedroom. We attempted to live together, and I was with her during the birth of our son, Cal. But my personality and Kate's personality merged about as well as an 80-year-old foreigner onto a highway under construction, if you follow the analogy. Kate moved to Madison, Wisconsin to be near her sister, and I was faced with the tough choice to follow my dreams or to follow my son. I could cheat myself out of my dreams, but I couldn't cheat myself out of my son. So I moved to Madison, Wisconsin. And I got a job at a little video studio. It's not Hollywood, but I entertain the thought that I'm going to produce something out of this little studio that'll get Hollywood's attention. As John Lennon sang, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. was an apocalypse then, still is. I faced as a director was the lack of communication with my crew. Reno, my main cameraman, spoke fluent Italian and about five words that he thought was English. I spoke fluent frustration as a result, mumbling words beneath my breath that even he would have understood.
sister, who plays Picky Hoover's mom, was called on to play domineering, which, just between you and I, came pretty natural to her. The, the tapes were misplaced? Sure, sure, I can send them again. No, no, no trouble. It's, it's okay. Um, if you happen to come across the uh, other 12 tapes that I sent, dating back to 1984, um, I, I'd appreciate their return. played princess was a little girl we borrowed from parents I never met. After two weekends of 12-hour days, I heard her parents had the FBI out looking for me. Don't ask me why, but I used to put soap under my nails to make it look like I washed my hands. Did you wash your hands? development. Thanks. Mr. White? Uh, um, my God. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I, I, you answered the phone. I, I never, I never expected you, you to answer. Mr. Mr. White? Um, uh, um, you, no, yeah, I'll hold. What happened to Mr. White? Uh, yeah, a ask him if, if he'll call me. Uh, yeah, ask him if he saw my Halloween special yet. Yeah, thanks. Ooh, that one. submissions. Uh, 
but the total cost of 14 tapes is, you know, almost a child support payment. Um, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I've been looking forward for eight years. Crowles, who played Mr. Hoover, is still mad at me to this day for leaving the take-in that shows him fumbling Barney Fife style to get his gun out. No, it wasn't in the script. It's a good thing there's really no such thing as witches. I sent out 92s this morning. Am I working on anything new? Well... Can you have him call me? Would it be possible to uh, have him call me? Great, thanks. Uh, can you have her call me? Okay, thanks. Could you, uh, have her call me? Can you have him call me? Get your call. Um, it, whatever it is. Whatever this thing is that I can't seem to communicate with. I know it I know I know it answers by what sounds like a, a person's name, but uh, I think it's a monster that's grown grown out of control and has no idea who and what it is. 
no, no, really, really, no, 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 don't, don't bother to call me back. I, I am going to have a nervous breakdown now. Thank you, thank you. For those of you who are wondering whether or not uh, the witch and I ever, you know, ask my dad. I saw his bald head peeking around the corner of my basement bedroom to see what all the noise was about. to Mr. Josh Cohen? Yes, tell him Gene Kalmus to call him. I'm with Audio Visual Associates. Regarding a uh, Halloween special I sent him. Yes. When, when will he be in? Can, can I speak to his secretary? Thank you. Hi, Marie. It's Gene Kalmus. We spoke several times about a Halloween special. Yeah, I produced it. I sent a three quarter inch tape and a half inch tape so Mr. Cohn could view it at home with his kids. Right. I, I sent them in January. It's now September, as you know. Um, I realize I'll have to wait uh, until next Halloween, but um, has he at least watched the shows? The, the tapes were misplaced.
the sooner you can get out of here. seven-year-old nephew who played Picky Hoover wouldn't say a line until I put a quarter in his hand for a video game. But note his performance. He was worth all 600 quarters. whose house we borrowed, stayed away for the weekend, and as the production ran over due to temperamental children, Reno and myself, we had to politely ask them where they were going next weekend. one producer did watch it. He said, I see what you're doing. It's a show with a message. You're pointing out that parents can abuse their children in a lot of ways. To not put such a stigmatism on eating. That kids will eat when they want to. And I was amazed. I said, yes. I said, yes. You're the only one who has ever understood it. He said, so you and I are geniuses, kid. Now what? Produce something the rest of the world will get and get back to me. Well, how to do with oh, green hat. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, man. How much do we owe you? Let's see. Seven hours, two fifty an hour, and seventy-two fifty. Oh well. What are your 
keep the change down. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Do you need a ride home? No, thanks. I've got my broom. production values have improved since then. It was fun when we did it. We learned a lot. And though we spent lots of hours and lots of money and lots of time, 